गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई एम बैक विद न्यू वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल इट इज़ रिलेटेड टू द डेवलपमेंट बायोलॉजी इट इज़ वेरी कॉमन एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक अकॉर्डिंग टू द एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इन द पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन क्लासेस एंड पीएचडी रिसर्च क्लासेस द बिल्वा फॉर्मेशन इन सी एलिगेंस First of all, I will uh, try to discuss about what is the vulva. Vulva is the external genitalia. It is the reproductive part and help in the egg laying. It is complicated path, the and signaling pathway. It is a development process that is part of the organogenesis. That is, vulva is, is type of a organ. So organ you very well know in a specific structure that have composition of similar type of cell and perform specific function. If I see the basic pattern of development, first of all the gametal genesis occur, later on the gamete male and female are distinctly formed and fertilization of gamete occur, then diploid structure is formed that is zygote, then cleavage from multiple cell blastula then three germ layer ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm later on these three layers have the determined fate they found the different type of organ i hope it is clear to you have a look on this anatomical diagram this is the all overall anatomy of the c elegans interior axis posterior side dorsal and ventral side showing the different parts its digestive part also the reproductive part reproductive part is a u shaped gonad and it is hermaphrodite very well clear hermaphrodite that is male and female occur in same organism here is the vulva it is structure of the egg laying the fertilized egg are laid here in the development stage and the further they are formed in the exterior side the very important thing is that it belong to the nematode and it show the <coughs> definite number of the cell it has a 959 cell it is the u tally that is a cell number never increases here the zygote later on the development stages the fate is determined 389 cell will form this type of structure 80 cell will form this structure 20 cell will form intestine 47 cell will form muscle neuron 20 will form muscle and these are the germline cell i hope it is clear to you about the anatomy of the c elegans the c elegans uh, is hermaphrodite 959 cell i have discussed it has a life cycle very larva transformation occur that is a molting in four stages L1 up to L4 the vulva formation start in L2 stage and complete in L4 stage it take about the 30 hour and the full form vulva have 22 cells there are the some important type of terminology that are important for understanding the development phenomena First of the signaling pathway in the vulva formation. First is the juxtacrine, second is the paracrine. Juxtacrine is a physically contact dependent signaling pathway that is the transmembrane receptor from the physical contact and these the cues or chemicals are directly transmitted to the cell. In the paracrine there is some distance between two cells and the cues are diffusible these chemicals signal protein diffusible up to some distance and they are received by the receptor but it differs from the hormonal signaling that occur in the adult animal when the endocrine glands are formed the paracrine is specific to the development phenomena next is the specified cell and determined cell the specified cell are those cell which are affected by the environment Depending upon the environment, what is provided to these type of cell, they form the different type of cell lineage. 
in the diagram very well clear if a cell is fed with the b promoting it will form b if c promoting it will form c if d promoting it will form d but in the determined cell the environment gradient never affect the one type of destined cell will always form that particular cell whatsoever the stimulus is being given next is, is the specification specification occur by the two phenomena the specified cell get specified by two mechanism first is the autonomous that is the cell have its own control mechanism it's control its uh, growth and development by its own mechanism the condition specification the cell is controlled by the presence of other cell that is the inducer chemical is sent to the cell and its functioning is affected this is the actual process of the vulva formation i have encircle this area particular to the vulva here the green labeled cell is a anchor cell single cell that is very main progenitor cell that regulate the growth of the vulva and in the lower there are the p to p uh, p3 p p4 p p5 p p6 p p7 p p8 p all these are the vulva precursor cell or the vc cells the anchor cell control these cells the center cell is the p6 p cell and the p5 p and p7 p cell they divide by three mito uh, mitotic division and form the eight cell one cell from the 5 and 7 p is disintegrated it forms seven cell side by side and eight cell in the inner size it forms 7 plus 8 plus 7 that is 22 so the fully formed vulva have 22 cells see this area carefully it is a inner area that is destined by 6p6 outer area by 5p5 7p7 and the flanking area by 3p3 p44 and p8p the flanking area that it is regarded as the hypodermal area outer area is called outer cell of the vulva and inner is the core area of the vulva i hope it is very well clear to you from this diagram next is the signaling here is a three type of the signaling that is sent in the vulva formation first is the inductive signaling lateral signaling and hypodermal signaling inductive signaling is sent by the anchor cell lateral by the vulva precursor cell and the hypodermal signaling by the hypodermal or hc cell all the p3p up to p8p cell these are vulva precursor cell these are equipotential cell that is they can form vulva from any type of p3p or p8p cell but the occurrence of the anchor cell is main this is the molecular mechanism showing the bill of formation here is the juxta crine signaling directly sent by the anchor cell to the p6p this is the lateral or paracrine signaling the chemical is also transmitted to these neural cells here is the transmembrane receptor that directly send this signal to it the directly receiving signal cell have the primary fate and these are the secondary fate and these are the tertiary fate determining cells here you can see in the inner cell what happens first of all the anchor cell secrete the lin3 protein in the higher it is called epidermal growth factor it is the let23 receptor on the p6p and other the cell here it receive the lin3 on reaching inside the cell it activate the sem5 then it attach with the let60 it is a ras dependent kinase receptor activated when gtp bond it further activate the map kinase 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 that is lin45 further activate map kinase kinase that is mac2 further activate map kinase that is mac1 the previous protein phosphorylate the 
advancing protein the phosphorylation make it from the switch off to switch on the mapk protein in phosphorylated it suppress the lin12 and it activate the lin31 uh, suppress lin31 which activate the lin39 the lin39 when it is the switch on it show the primary fate when it is off it show the secondary fate and the lin12 it bind with the notch receptor to the dsl protein and show the secondary fate i hope it is clear to you the whole process on the protein level for the bilba formation in the last you can see the anchor cell showing its effect the lin12 on the last formula lin39 that form the primary fate and the lin12 action is up to activating the dsl winding with the uh, secondary fate determining cell the dsl protein have the greater affinity to bind with the lat receptor in the secondary cell but is never bind with the d cell so these form the secondary cell so it will later on form seven cell it will form eight cell it will form seven cell and total will be 22 cells i hope i am unable to uh, show you the bilba formation i may have skipped many levels many later searches but uh, what i have got the actual data i have discussed with you if you like this video subscribe my channel and share this video among the science student thank you very much and have a wonderful day